Hi, this is Amir and I'd like to show you our new WooCommerce Multilingual plugin. The new admin screen is here under WPML WooCommerce Multilingual. It has several tabs. You start with a general store settings tab. The plugin first checks that all other required plugins are installed. There's a long list which includes WPML, WPML Media, Translation Management, String Translation, and of course WooCommerce. Then it checks and tells you if you need to translate any WooCommerce store pages. On my installation it's already translated. This includes the pages that WooCommerce creates. Let's have a look at them. These are the cart and the checkout and everything under the checkout, the user account. So WooCommerce Multilingual will check that all of the pages exist in all languages. If not, it will create them for you. Next, there are some file path synchronization. This means uh, this is for downloadable products. and It means if you want to translate or use the same path for downloaded pro pro products in all languages. And finally, we have the multi-currency but this requires a different video, so we'll talk about that uh, next time. Okay. The next tabs you see here are for the product translation, and then the, at the WooCommerce, different WooCommerce taxonomy. You always have the shipping classes and the, pod the product categories and product tag tags, and after them, you'll find your custom attributes. Let's have a look at them for a minute. Go to Products, Attributes. I added size and color, and they have some terms. So don't translate them here. Well, of course, you can translate them here, but it's going to be a lot more work. A lot more work and also a lot more difficult to manage. Instead, you should translate all attributes here. For example, this is the translation interface for the size um, attributes. Large, Largo. When I want to translate, I click on the term name and enter the name, the slug, and the description. If I want to create a translation that's missing at the moment, I click on the translate tag and enter them. For each of these tabs here, you'll see two tables. The first one includes the terms, taxonomy terms, and the next one the labels. The labels are what we will see on the listing pages, on the front end, anywhere where there's a label for that taxonomy. Okay, and I think it's time to look at products now. <coughs> Let's create a new product. I'll give it a name. Okay. Remember in WPML you translate everything from the just publish that. We have something. Okay. In WPML you translate everything from this box. If you'll try to translate them, you'll notice that we're not linking to the regular translation um, page. We're linking to the WooCommerce Multilingual Translation tab. I'll show that in a second. Okay, let's enter some data for this product. Let's make it interesting. We'll use, um, we'll use a variable product. Okay. So I'll select which attributes I want to use. 
let's just make it simple for us and use just uh, just size. I will select that it's uh, visible for the products page and use the fold variations because that's what we want to have and select all terms. Actually, let's let's make it even easier. Let's select just two terms. I'm saving them and I will add the variations. We just have two. We can let WooCommerce add them. And let's add some information. Make it noticeable. Here's the image for this variation. Let's choose one of them as the featured image. It's going to be difficult at this width. Let's make this okay. Here's a senseless featured image. Okay, and we can save this product. We should save this product. All the synchronization is done when we save products. WooCommerce Multilingual goes through the different attributes and um, variations and images and it synchronizes them between the original language and translations. So even though WooCommerce doesn't require you to save the entire product on some changes, you should save them now. Okay, now that's translated. Now if I go to Spanish So you'll see that I've landed back here on the WooCommerce Multilingual Admin screen. Okay, um, this is not the regular Woo um, WordPress post edit. Let's just add translation. I'll make it easy for us to find. Save this. And well, we can translate the excerpt. If we'd had custom fields, we would see them here, but we don't because we have translation uh, variations that are built on taxonomy, on global attributes. So we should be just fine now. And let's look at the at the site. Here's our new product. Let's open this in a new tab. And here's the Spanish product. So you can see that well, here's the English, just for you. Here's the Spanish. Okay. So what well, are some good things? Everything here is in Spanish, but uh, the credit for this is actually for WooCommerce for supplying a Spanish MO file. But everything remains in Spanish with us. So you, let's select one of the variations. Okay, and you can see, remember we created these variations in English and now they're Spanish. By the way, we obviously we see that also in the Spanish uh, shop page. This is here in Spanish shop. And we have our marble here. It doesn't look like a marble, but trust me, you buy it, you get a marble. And we'll add this to the cart. Great. And when we go to the cart, have a look here at the URL. We remain in Spanish. We continue in Spanish throughout the purchase process. I'm going to really buy this 
this product now. Well, that's great. Okay, and we're, we're in Spanish the whole way, which is kind of nice for our clients. Let's go to my account. And we have my our orders here. Unfortunately, this is still an espera because I haven't really paid for this. We can switch languages here if we like. So the same thing in English. Okay, that's great. Um, just a few notes about what you'll see, what we have now and what's coming next. So this beta version works well. We're going to have some uh, aesthetic changes here. So this listing is going to look a bit more organized. This entire page is going to look somewhat more organized. We're going to have uh, warnings here when you have attributes that need translation. Otherwise, it's a big trap. If you, if you create products, very, especially variable products, uh, that rely on taxonomy and that uh, taxonomy is not fully translated, then some of the variations will not be created because their uh, attributes are not translated yet. So we're going to have uh, big warnings about that, both in the general settings store uh, page and in the uh, taxonomy page itself. Uh, we're going to make this look a little prettier. The product translation is going to be made a little bit more prettier as well. But generally, this is a structure of things. So remember, you created a product, you create some attributes, you translate them here. Translate here the attributes, then you translate the products. You click here to add to edit the translations. And off you go. Um, I want to show you a product that uses custom field attributes, private attributes. Okay, so let's go here to the products. Here we have the products. Okay, so this product uses attributes. Well, one of the attributes came from a global attribute. Here you can see these um, terms, ton uh, taxonomy terms, but the other one is a local attribute. Um, you know how to add this, right? The custom product attributes. Okay, so the values that you enter here are variation names, the attribute names, separated by pipe. Okay, it looks quite the same on the admin, but it's a completely different thing because this uses a custom field. Let's have a look at this, what's it called, wheat product here in the table. Okay, so because a sweet product uses a custom field called grain with the attribute names, you translate them here. You don't translate them in the taxonomy, in the global attributes tabs, because it's not global, it's it's unique to this product. So you, you do the same thing as you did in English. You enter the translation separated by pipe. Another thing that will add to this version is translation for the um, attribute name itself. So in the final version, you're also going to be able to translate the word grain itself here. Let's have a quick look at how it looks on the front end. But on the front end, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that this attribute is a um, local or global okay you still see it here and it still gets translated the same so the variations get created no matter if it's a local or global attribute that's all i have to show now uh, we're in beta and we're planning to release the full version in about a week after the beta i hope your testing goes well if you find anything, please do let us know. Thanks for watching.